So welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. And we are ready to go. And I'm um, sorry for a little bit of late start here today, but um, looking at some charts here and we'll be going through some movers. The markets are basically holding, hold back and where we were talking about it would end um, active tra trader class. So we'll unpack this a little bit more tomorrow, but uh, let's see who's here. We've got Lisa, Alex, uh, Pirate J, Rick, hey Rick, and Glenn. And uh, okay, so people are still joining. KS is here. All right, great. Well, any questions before we kick things off? I have a new news resource that we're going to play around with. And uh, just a little bit of an announcement. Uh, we're in talks with the um, guys over at uh, Cointelegraph. Oh, let's see. I am on the pro version. Let me pull this up on the other screen here while you guys look at this. So uh, essentially, um, you know, the news is all over the place. Generally, the news is pretty good here inside of trading view. Somehow I've turned it off on my main daily screen, but uh, usually this is where I'll start. So the, um, let's see, uh, 100K Bitcoin price next for a standard chartered bank after, you know, this is, there's going to be a lot of noise out there about price predictions and probably want to ignore it. And because there's a lot of these uh, people trying to make a name for themselves, throwing big numbers out, but you know, 80K seems like a bit of a stretch. And especially with all this regulatory uncertainty, ultimately we'll see a break though. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And um, the SEC lawsuit with XRP, as it's as far as legal proceedings, it's apparently winding down. There's not more uh, arguments. So a decision should be coming soon. It's just impossible to know when they'll release it. And uh, it looks like Coinbase is going on the offensive after the SEC and considering moving offshore. So that's uh, some of the news that uh, maybe you guys had heard or not. And um, let's see, uh, I know that um, uh, Binance is doing some things uh, offshore. Of, of course, the main Binance, Kraken's offshore. So uh, I think there's, I'm trying to, I'm, there's one other one that is um, maybe Gemini. That's what I posted the other day. Gemini is creating an offshore international derivatives exchange so that's interesting and then very telling that these you know us the us is blowing it we're kind of sending all this stuff offshore and uh let me just pull up something markets pro i want to show you this and i need to find the site on that but uh anyway so this is just getting a, a read on the news here we've got um coinbase going after now brian anderson's already said he's no problem suing the sec and uh, we were also watching and seeing Lots of C-level executive shares of Coinbase being dumped, especially by Brian Anderson as far back as December. Now, I mean, these guys typically have a, a schedule where they're selling shares. Founders are continually selling shares. And so, but it really picked up on that um, market, uh, that Insiders Pro. I know some of you have that. Uh, I pulled up uh, Coinbase and uh, the CFO and Brian Anderson. They were all dumping tons of shares of Coinbase before the Wells Act was announced. That's the precursor of an SEC uh, investigation and uh, enforcement. So, anyway, um, you know, there's so much conspiracy th stuff you could dive into, like this whole Fox News. Tucker Carlson is a big a commentator here on Fox News, or was was recently fired, uh, and I don't know the whole story, but I was just reading something this morning, and that's what I'm generally doing before class is just looking around, getting a feel for things. The uh, powerful BlackRock, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, juggernaut <laughs> is uh, they own like $50 billion worth of Dominion voting stock machines and about 45 billion of, uh, is it million or billion? I mean, it's, it's a lot of uh, Fox News. So they basically were suing each other in, in that whole mess. And it's kind of a wash, right? If you're wondering why Fox News settled with Dominion for that much, it's just going basically the same place. And um, you know, I'm not the the ultimate expert on that, but uh, it's uh, it's kind of follow the money news kind of uh, path, and worth worth parking it in your brain somewhere. So um, <clears throat> let's see, pulling up some other news here while I try to find this the. The CT Markets Pro coin, I think that's what it's called. And the announcement is uh, we're going to be doing some stuff very likely with uh, Cointelegraph and uh, having some conversations with one of their guys over there that's uh, not directly in Cointelegraph. It's kind of um, 
uh, an offshoot, but he's integral into the organization and wants to work with us. And they're doing some really good editorials over there. And so uh, let me move this over so I don't do all of that. So we'll take a look at this and then over some Bitcoin news, and then we'll look at some charts here together. And if any of you guys are seeing anything else that we want to talk about, uh, by all means, let us uh, let me know if you want to share some news. It's kind of an interactive class. I'm also thinking about doing these live on YouTube, just kind of doing a live cast, but uh, we need to get um, kind of set up for that. And part of the team has COVID again. So anyway, um, it is what it is. So um, in terms of this here, this, this, this is the Cointelegraph Tags Market Pro. We have nothing to sell you here. Just they have a pretty good breakdown of the news, but they have this software that I'm trying to find that kind of lists it inside of like a main dashboard. So maybe I'll share that with you guys later, just because instead of jumping around all over the place on the news, it'd be good to have kind of a one place to uh, find all of the, uh, the news aggregated, kind of like we do with Crypto Panic. And so for now, we'll look into that as well. So um, this is something here. Well, here's one global impact of Bitcoin soccer. Well, that's not really relevant. Okay. Bitcoin morning. We probably will jump right into the charts here. Is Genesis creditors reject bankruptcy settlement halt proceedings. That could be interesting. So I'll open that up. And... Um, <clears throat> So I saw something about this, this Pepe coin. Can I click on the wrong one? From Pepe coin to Baby Doge. So this Pepe coin, somebody I know, they um, caught it early and they had a huge run on that thing. And I hadn't heard of it, but I looked it up. So, okay, here we go. Let's look at this. So that The uh, crypto has guns pointed at it. Uh, sometimes I have these things pre-queued up in the morning, but it changes a lot. And a lot of the best stories come out midday. So it's good to do this together. So you guys learn kind of how we do this and how you can do it on uh, off uh, other days while we're not doing class. Uh, I saw something on Tucker here. Yeah. All right. So this looks like a video, but um, short version, Tucker Carlson fired from Fox News. Fox News lost like 750 billion, sorry, million in market cap. Uh, almost overnight, so it's uh, almost rivals the bid uh, Bud Light debacle. So Tucker was the only member of the legacy corporate media that's pro Bitcoin, and uh, so that's an interesting angle. I hadn't heard that. So uh, and the Bitcoin conference, by the way, I keep asking you guys, anybody going to that? I'll be down there. So tickets are still on sale, on, on sale, on sale, uh, and um, it's a great time. I encourage you to go. It's really great to see this thing growing and just being in the in the environment of thousands of people. I think, you know, I think there was like 20,000 people last year. There was 5,000 the year before. It's at the Miami Conference Center, and uh, it just being there, it's really great. You guys should get, uh, consider. And if you do, we'll get together and uh, you know, good to get. Get some pictures with some of you guys. I don't know. I'll be down there and always uh, fun to run into people. <clears throat> and so anyway, I had a whale pass last year. This year, I'm just going to go regular because uh, uh, it was it was great. It was good to do, but probably not worth the $10,000 price tag on those tickets. And uh, I we had a uh, Mike had a deal friend who had an extra pass. So it was still it was still two grand, but. Uh, cheaper than 10. All right. Um, let's see. So that's all I'll dive into with Tucker. Let's see here. We've got some other news headlines there. I'm not seeing a whole lot. Let's see. Interesting. But um, I'm trying to find this. This is about their software. I want to show it to you because it's pretty cool. But uh, for some reason, I can't find it. It... Um, all right, we'll, we'll do that another time when I have it pulled up. I'll be talking to the guy on Friday. Mike and I had a good call with this guy uh, last week. So uh, enough about that, but let's see. Markets Pros, this is about their software, I guess. Yeah, this is what I was looking up for, though. Maybe they have a link. Let me just find it. And I'm not showing this to you for any other reason that i wanted to show you to for the news because the free version of it is um 
Uh, we we might have some kind of an offer on this in the future, but that's that's not why I want to pull it up. Well, where is this darn thing? Um, <laughs> all right, we said enough time on that. Moving along, we've got some the Bitcoinists saying, yeah, guns pointed at it by the U.S. regulators. Let's see, uh, tech billionaire Shamath. Okay, he's a pretty smart guy. Uh, let's see. So it'll be more wary on digital assets. Gary Gensler's harsh position. I don't know. Think I don't think they'll fire him and lose face. But he was. They were letting him have it in front of the um, the meetings last week. Uh, getting blamed for the banking crisis and FTX. Well, deservedly, deservedly. Although Sam fooled a lot of people. Crypto is dead in America. Wow, that's pretty harsh. Uh, Bitcoin bull. Good luck saying his last name. Palihapitiya, that's how you say it, who blamed the digital currency's demise entirely on authorities. The digital currency sector in the United States has been choked to death. He's a bit um, dramatic, but um, yeah, everyone's piling in on this. I just, I wonder, I think, you know, we do have a, a deeper dip in this that um, we just don't know like what uh, how bad it could be. In the words of Chimathius, authorities have become far more aggressive in their pursuit of industry bad actors. Or how you know how many more can there be? According to Gensler, crypto trading platforms must follow. Now I, I agree with this. These trading platforms, these offshore ones, and why I applaud the Winklevoss at Gemini for doing an offshore derivatives exchange, because you know the SEC won't allow margin trading here yet and the ones that do allow it by bit even bitget and uh the founder of bitmex uh, arthur hayes we've talked about that you know arthur hayes was sort of accused of making the majority of their money at bitmex by liquidating their own clients uh this is not a this is not a nice orderly fair marketplace make no mistake there's a lot of money and they're offshore for a reason and they don't care um gemini i think that they would do it right so you know, that's um, a conversation for later. I don't know if we'll teach a day trading class. Uh, I, I decided against it because I realized after peeling back the onion, how manipulated price is on the shorter time frames and how liquidations is the name of the game. That's what they do. And, uh, you know, uh, we won't go further into that. They they could be at the exchange level, as well, but more than likely at the big um, market maker level. When Tiger came in, Tiger Direct, I think, they were the big market maker in Bitcoin that came into that market in 2021, 2022, they certainly have the power and strength to move, move price around. And that's across exchanges. But at any rate, um, hopefully that'll shake out, you guys. Uh, Coinbase ready for court war. Let's see, let me go back up a bit. Several companies, including Bittrex, have been charged by the SEC. Yeah, Bittrex, um, we talked a little bit about that, sent out a note to their account holders i have i used bitrix last year and you know i had enjoyed it i mean it was a good place to find the securities like syscoin and i think pirate chain was there it was just it's a nice exchange pretty orderly and um but uh, they've been charged by the sec so bitrix is now no longer servicing us clients and that's uh it's a shame let's see february proposal to bar financial advisors Hmm. <clears throat> well, that's interesting. I'll have to dig into that because I'm not a financial advisor, as you've heard me say before. But um, these rules are not clearly written. And uh, let's see, possibility of legal action against a number of Coinbase products are recent instances of SEC's enforcement actions. Yeah, they're they're also sort of going after BitBoy. I like him or hate him. He's um he's a very vocal proponent, and he also broke the FTX story early on. He was one of the first. And, um, you know, he's got, you know, he's got some ambulance chaser attorney going after him and he, he sort of uh, publicly snubbed his nose at them and went to the Bahamas. Not sure how that'll play out, but um, Mike and I have had a uh, brief discussion about that. And hopefully that's not the end of what we do here. I mean, if they start really targeting people that, uh, you know, again, we're not financial advisors, don't claim to be, but um, they... I haven't defined yet on what rule cases are around that. At any rate, uh, we'll keep moving. 
the Outbitrex ceased operations, continued regulatory uncertainty. And um, there's that word. I was just watching uh, Billions last night. So, uh, it resisted the show for many years because of the obnoxious title. But if you're not a fan of big, uh, Billions, it's uh, there's a great line in there in the hedge fund world where if they have inside information, the lead guy, Bobby Axelrod, will ask his henchman. He's like, are you certain about this? And the uh, the sort of code for we have inside information is I'm not uncertain. And uh, so that's maybe the only place there's uncertainty uh, on TV in the hedge fund world. Um, a little bit of truth to that, though, probably a lot. A lot of uncertainty in these marketplaces. So that means risk. And uh, let's see. And by the way, I, I was, uh, they are they have made more shows. I forgot if you were watching Billions before COVID and then they uh, kind of shut down production and they said it was over. They uh, did shoot a whole bunch of new uh, episodes. So kind of binge watching that. It's good um, entertainment. Uh, let's see. Bitcoin climb again. It's in a Bitcoin loss of faith in the leaders. I mean, a lot of this is sort of. You know, again, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. We're in the Bitcoin four-year cycle. We wouldn't expect Bitcoin to be going much, much higher yet. It's improving. We saw that uh, push up higher. We should see a bit of a pullback. And I do think that we have some catalyst that pushes us to 48K, 50K. But that's just based on the golden pocket. We'll look at that. And, uh, of course, new information equals new decisions. So we want to watch all of these things. Uh, let's see, there's this operation to choke point. I've read a little bit about this, but essentially coordinated efforts by regulators to prevent banks from holding Bitcoin or giving services to crypto firms. Um, they are, there was a new announcement of a firm that's going to start ha handling uh, Bitcoin uh, banking overseas, of course. But um, you can read about this operation choke point. There's a whole, there's a whole bunch of tentacles in there that I won't get into. So um, the big question is, and what happens on the next bull run? You know, do we hit new highs? Some are saying we don't. Some are saying we maybe get to 80,000. Uh, I have a chart where it looks more like 144,000. But one thing's for sure, and just to segue into our indicators, is that we will be watching intently what they are telling us. Okay, and... Uh, especially on the weekly chart. The monthly has been great for check catching the bottoms. Uh, the weekly is the big winner on those, those tops. So let me find a chart and clean up a little bit here. So just as a quick review, knowing what we know now, you know, the uh, ERI called the exact uh, top here, right there. And the confirmation is that TSI breaking down. We had a little bit of a fake out here. But then it reversed and it held at that blue line, which uh, I believe is the 50-week moving average. That's that golden uh, death cross, et cetera. 50-week and the 200-week. When the 50 comes down, that's that death cross here. So let's stay on point, though. So basically, you had a reversal here. A bounce twice off of that 50-week moving average. So again, we're just looking at, I'll hide these other ones. And by now, this is uh, not, not new to you guys, but I'm just looking at these two things, the ERI and the TSI. So what did we have? We had that midsummer bounce in July, market bottom to the week and to the day, confirmed by the TSI, beautiful re-entry point, bounce off the 50-week moving average, pushed up higher, bearish ERI, bit of a fake out, came down, did break below the 80. And, you know, this would have indicated, hey, probably breaking down. Had that push higher, that was that Wyckoff up thrust after distribution. So now we know and rec how to recognize that. That was the ultimate fake out. Then we had the ERI and TSI confirming. And then we continued lower with a secondary ERI and TSI turning back to red. So on the downside, on the market tops, uh, the ERI TSI combo was uh, excellent. Um, and we didn't get an ERI up here. It's a bit surprising, but we did have our TSI breaking down. So that's why we're watching these things. Same thing on the weekly here, where we are now. TSI breaking down in the red. We want to see this close to confirm it uh, this Sunday. And if it's below this 80 line, then I do think we can, we continue lower. That 80, the, the weekly is that longer term trend. 
So, you know, this is normal. We pushed up off this bottom here, a nice big push up. And, you know, this scenario of Bitcoin 100,000, uh, I don't know if that's realistic now. We're getting the expected pullback, however, that I was expecting here. And just to show that um, if if this fractal pattern, if I draw it a little differently, and if we're now looking more like this, then uh, just because of these recent bar patterns, you know, maybe this next push we get to 58,000, but I think this 48K to 52K in this region is is a likely push up higher. So at any rate, let's we'll come back to that. Any questions on that? I just want to make sure that we are all of the same mindset and where we could be going here. And a lot of it's going to depend on the interest rates continuing. And But again, show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. Let's come back to this uh, chart, you know, pulling back to this purple line, that 200-week moving average, which has been so important in the past. And so we almost want to see this thing come back to that. And, um, you know, this might take a few more weeks. I've been saying June, July, we should really start to rally. May, April, May. May typically hasn't been a good month for Bitcoin, uh, usually the Bitcoin conference. Um, so if we just pontificate here for a moment, if these are weekly signals and we're here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 before that rebounds, I mean, that's three months potentially. So we could be looking at another July type of rally I was just uh, wondering if we wouldn't see that happen sooner. So this can certainly happen quicker. This was a bit of an extended, that was from the market cycle high. So I would imagine it'd be quicker, probably more like this. So if we are sort of in this range, then we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <clears throat> a little bit sooner, two and a half months. So this is what we should, we should be watching for. We have a bearish ERI last week. We have a TSI rolling over. There's nothing bullish about this right now. And uh, in retrospect, yeah, wouldn't that be great if we could trade in retrospect? I, I just was busy. I probably should have sold out of my Ethereum right here at 2100. And But where do you think we could go on all this? On the daily, looking at our signals. Now, the daily, we, we should see somewhat of a bounce a little bit sooner on this. And within those weekly cycles, you can see these multiple daily cycles. So that would be, that would be another way and chance to sort of exit out of this into resistance and um so i do it does look like we're going to have some kind of a bounce here soon on this we're waiting for well we have an eri you guys on the daily i see some comments and questions so uh, i'll get to that here in a minute a minute so what um i know there's a lot on this chart here but uh this uh the moving average right here that's a 50 day ema we're holding there doesn't look entirely good, but it is a bullish ERI forming. And so if we get a bullish ERI on or sorry, on the TSI confirming, then we should see some kind of a rally here. But because of that weekly looking to come down, we want to be looking to take profits. Okay. And keep an eye on this 50-day EMA. If this thing starts to break to the downside, then we're going to likely have more downside on this. And so... Let's see, I'll get to some comments here. Okay, it says the big deal is that there have been quite a few registered securities that turned out to be frauds and the SEC is silent on those. Example, NKLA. I'm not familiar with NKLA, reverse merger IPOs. Yeah, and I uh, wonder if they'll go after the SPACs next. The uh, special purpose <clears throat> acquisition companies. Uh, Shamath was a player on the ICO boom one and a half years ago, hyping his projects. I would not listen to what he's saying by now. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, okay, all right, guess, sure. You are referring to the SPACs. They're similar. Um, so uh, great, great, great invention, though. There's a guy I know online that just, uh, he built a software company and just got bought out for $110 million via a SPAC, which combined some other assets and now is valued at 380 million. It's just like, boom, overnight, guy's worth 100 million, crazy. 
so um yeah we're uh not look as to what he's saying so what i was trying to say is jim you know he's he he's a uh, very outspoken he's kind of like mr wonderful though you know he's uh these billionaires they their commentary is going to be in line with what's going to benefit their assets whether that precedes or is an afterthought you know bill ackerman's the worst came out during covid went on tv saying hell is coming it's gonna be horrible he's just and you and i could tell i remember when that happened i was like something something's up with this guy it's just there's a little bit 10 percent extra drama with this sure enough he was short heavily across airlines all these industries made a billion on that so should be illegal it's almost like insider trading these guys come out on tv scare the shit out of everybody they're short nice gig which you know um it, it takes a certain type of uh, level of sociopath to to do that and probably many of these guys are um <clears throat> you know you don't need much more than 10 million uh, billionaires you yeah, watch billions you'll you'll get a feel for the level of sociopath uh, personality they've done a good job at at um portraying that uh at any rate um no more comments questions so let's keep going how are we doing on time half an hour good on time we could go back to some more news and uh, unpack this a little bit more uh this pepe coin um and it's not entirely related to crypto mastery and the indicators but let's see uh these i did look them up the pepe coin and there was another one elon coin that just had uh, i think these were icos that shot up here i'm not going to look talk about doge but um uh the newly created meme coin pepe coin pepe coin whatever that is pepe coin scott yeah skyrocketed uh so to compete with meme you know you know that's why all these people that miss doge are jumping into this thing skyrocketed 21 000 percent since its launch last weekend seven large meme coin in a market cap uh, meme coinbase on the peppy the frog has self-reported circulation 420 trillion there's no scarce scarcity there is there uh also carrying an exercise caution sign on the coin market cap uh, oh yeah and then an investor known as smart money purchased 5.9 trillion peppy coins for 0.12 ethereum uh wow subsequently turned him into a millionaire 0.125 ethereum well what's ethereum at? It's around 2000 so if this is uh what would that that'd be like you know it's uh it's half of 25 percent 25 percent of 2000 is uh 500 so that costs him 250 dollars of eth turned him into a millionaire it's crazy crazy well you never know there you go uh for fun let's take a look at uh the peppy coin yeah i mean i'm surprised this is holding this thing went straight up and uh in a day so he must have bought right in the during this pump here it's amazing this hasn't crashed yet but i would imagine it, it will so our indicators have no nothing to show us here by the way there's not enough history if, if that's not obvious um i don't know why spidey sense is telling me pull up the ai coins so suddenly we're let's we feel like being gamblers here let's pull up some ai coins we got bitcoin go btc now now that we have some history these are very light liquidity here but uh we have look at this we have our um tsi turning higher and do i have the eri on i don't we have an eri tsi in that so here's the thing be careful with these but i need to get rid of that thing uh but you know keep i'd say pay attention to them let me zoom out on that a bit all right well here's what do we first of all what do we see long standing downtrend now we've already looked at this and i've already have an alert up higher here so to catch a possible breakout and i'm going to lower that you know but uh because i this is one to possibly watch i mean this is uh i don't know anything about go chain but 
So what do we have here? We have an ERI TSI signal about to turn. My So what I always do first is I look left and just see how we've seen this pattern before. Kind of saw it here, we saw it here, we saw it here and it had a little bit of a push, but this is just, you know, this is one for a quick, a little bit of money to push higher on to make a, a quick buck, you know, and uh, up to this area. So, but still 73%, but the possibility, I don't know where this is traded. It's on Bittrex. Well, the problem is can't you can't use Bittrex now in the US. Uh, so let's just kind of just run through these for the hell of it. So, um, you know, we have our active trader basket. We'll go through that tomorrow in the active trader class. Uh, if you're watching the replay on YouTube and would like more information about our M3 Active Trader program, it's at moonstream.io slash M3. All right, uh, Doc here, Ravencoin. What are we looking for here? Turn uh, Turns higher. You know, th this is not one to ignore, this Doc. I, can't, I don't know what it does. But we want to look for an alignment if we see a break above, you know, the uh, this area here. And we have this TSI ERI break above, and maybe it's on Binance. Uh, we've got Ravencoin, nothing really happening there. It's too early. Uh, MDT, let me just sort these by percentage change. All right, we'll come back here to CQT. We looked at that before. Just looked at that ALI. Okay, nothing really happening here. Well, render maybe, but don't don't go out and buy these unless you're sure. We want to see all of these in alignment, and I'm not seeing that. It's probably not a time to be buying anything uh, right now. You know, we don't want to let the market come to us. And uh, just jumping around on this, so not a whole lot going on here. I'm not sure why it's body sense. I bring that up. Probably because, you know, we, we want to watch for the bottoming cycles. You know, the best, what we found are these best opportunities are when we're coming out of, you know, a, a strong downturn. And even though there are fake outs, uh, these can be profitable for short, you know, swing trades. And that's why we're here. You know, three to five day swing trades. Actually, this is Crypto Mastery. So this is, you know, for watching the indicators on all time frames. And, um, so I think that's enough for all we want to look at here. Uh, did we finish the news here? Uh, this KS says, Mr. Trump is associated with Pepe coin. Maybe there's some tea leaves to be read there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the the Trump army, or if you want to call them that, yeah, would, um, I don't even want to unpack that. Who knows? They might be buying it up because of some affiliation. I'm not really sure. I think it's probably more the people that lost that on Dogecoin. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's enough about that. And Genesis creditors reject bankruptcy settlement, halt proceedings. Let's see why. The bank uh, reneged on settlement. Hmm. Did you see creditors demanded new settlement details? Um, not entirely good, but I don't know who that affects. DCG worse, and um, well, Genesis owes 3.6 billion to its top 50 creditors. I don't know how you dig out of that, you can't. Uh, let's see, yeah, the Wilco boss previously threatened to sue DCG, and nothing really happened over that, did they? And um Probably because they know, you know, Barry Silbert, head of DCG, his background is bankruptcies and handling bankruptcies. So they're probably realizing they'd never see anything. Uh, anyway, let's see. Wasn't me saying that about Pepe coin. Oh, OK. Sorry, that was part Pirate J talking about Mr. Trump is associated with Pepe coin. Yeah. Is DCG already priced in or still a potential grace one? I, I don't know. Okay, yes, that's, um, you know, I can't tell you that. That's that's a good question. You know, that would certainly be a big, uh, if that if they went under, it would certainly be a big, big issue. At least it's scary, right? So um, anything else we missed here? There's not a whole lot happening in the markets, so... 
you know, uh, we can dream a little bit. Can Bitcoin moon to 1.3 million on the global reserve? AMB Crypto suggesting. Uh, oh, and by the way, I, I, I might be doing some uh, editorials for Cointelegraph. We'll see. Not to get ahead of ourselves. And uh, that, that could be fun. Let's see. Special foreign reserve, but currency, what are we looking at here? Uh, some, mm-hmm. does Bitcoin match the gold standard? I think we're a long way off from this. You know, uh, just scanning here, percentage of gold reserves in selected central bank holdings. Portugal's number one, interesting. But I'm surprised, I thought Russia, China was higher than this because they've been buying a lot of gold. This can't be right. Percentage of gold reserves. Oh, oh, in central bank holdings. So they're holding in their gold somewhere else, maybe, or not declaring it. You know, that's the thing. They don't declare it. Russia's not going to tell us how much gold they have. China, why would they? Um, okay. Pirate J. Yeah, Sam says, any news? Hey, Sam. Uh, about the whole TikTok VPN ban thing. No, we can look it up. Um, date on the chart. Well, no date. Statistica, but no date on it. Well, let me click on it. Sometimes they link through. Yeah, it's from April 2023, it would seem. They always put these uh, sort of in the date category folders. So it's, it's recent, but again, I mean, they're, who's, they're not going to tell us. I mean, call up Putin and say, hey, uh, can you tell us how much gold you have in your central bank reserves? Yeah. Uh, this is interesting. Cryptocurrency trading and investment adoption curve. Uh, source questionable Finoa. I don't know who they are, but um, the next phase would be largest institutions, mutual funds, pension funds, insurance companies. Yeah, and that'll only happen as I've been saying when we get regulation and meaningful regulation, and then and that doesn't scare people out of the country. For for instance, I'm going to copy that though. That's kind of a cool image here. Let's put that uh, into the M3 chat. So that'll put that over in our uh, M3 Active Trader chat because that's kind of cool. Good, good reminder. Uh, crypto.com, crypto owners reached. You know, we are seeing more and more adoption. You know, I'm getting alerts all the time from uh, it's a glass node. Basically, I set an alert on the number of wallets, wallet holders over, you know, uh, holding over a thousand um, dollars in Bitcoin continues to rise. And they say this is a retail-driven rally, not institutional. So global crypto owners, number of wallets, reached 295 million. And uh, leads toward adoption rate. So it's uh, slowing down a little bit, but it, you would also seem that it grows in spurts. You know, it goes kind of sideways, sideways, boom, sideways, sideways, pushes higher. So it's up and to the right. That's kind of the whole argument with all of this. Despite everything, it's still up and to the right. Right. So anyway, enough about that. Sanctions, uh, Bitcoin ordinals. Yeah, I want to look at this real quick. I've, I've been hearing about the ordinals and I am. Um, one of the potential partners on my software platform is uh, is the world class UA UI developer. He's doing some stuff with ordinals. It's a Bitcoin based NFT. Something to keep an eye on. But I know nothing about these, like where to buy them, where to track them. Let's see, Ordinal's inscriptions is a collection of non-fungible tokens on the Bitcoin network have attained a new milestone. This is as of yesterday. The number of daily inscriptions minted in a single block surpassed 14,000. All this occurs at a time when interest in the assets seems to have simmered down. I mean, the Bitcoin maxis, uh, you know, this is where they'll likely go to buy their NFTs. And uh, let's see, Dune Analytics is kind of where to watch those. That breakthrough in Satoshi land. Let's see here. I'm going to screenshot that. I guess an inscription is like a minting, maybe. Anyone following these? Uh, let's see. How timely. Okay. Remember Sun Tzu's The Art of War? Know it well. Uh, you appear strong when you're weak. Appear weak when you're strong. China is unlikely to declare all of their CB gold holdings reserves. Right, exactly as I said. Appear weak, 
when you were strong uh that chart they were way way down on the list but they've been buying we, we keep hearing that they've been buying and the BRICS nations i mean i believe that's the whole point behind it uh brazil russia india china saudis and more and more joining uh, want to get back to a gold standard reserve currency a lot of debate over that if that happens and if we if us actually loses reserve it's so ingrained in all this but it's just hard to know you can't really uh predict these things these days because the real narrative you know i would i just realized the reason i was watching billions last night is, is it's kind of like the what the world is right now it, it uh the latest episodes are the second you think you know but axelrod's got the upper hand on the the uh, uh attorney general you know it's it's completely 180 and then back again and it's like you're just like all right i can't even follow this anymore but um you know i was also hearing today that they're proving that the average uh human has a shorter attention span than a goldfish probably true the goldfish is looking at you waiting to be fed they want at least they know that but the whole point of that is tv these days has to kind of jump around and cater to our add brain at any rate back to the news uh ordinals are series numbers of satoshi small engraved data merged bitcoin uh i don't know you can read down on this i don't i'll have to ask mike about how we could maybe what should we do with this information because I, i'm not i can't even speak intelligently toward this anyone following the uh, ordinals feel free to chime in i'm going to move on um okay back to this choke point thing so you know there's not a whole lot here we really can unpack further let's see bitcoin flat lines let's go back and look at the charts well let's look at this one uh you know predictions all over the place bloomberg 50k 100k could rise to 100k says standard chartered don't i don't know who they are i don't know it's all these ads i can't read the article and they just it's all it's clickbait they want you to click on it and go look at their ads and then subscribe and uh, i don't have time for that bitcoin price may hit 100k by year end and crypto winter's over bitcoin having set up positive catalyst sure could happen anything could happen could also go to zero i mean probably not most likely not zero but you know what i'm saying we can't count on any of these things we can count on water charts are telling us on a week to week and day-to-day -day basis uh so th this is all just trying to get eyeballs there are all of these are their business model is advertising revenue in some form or another uh and that that's kind of why just to touch on the Car Tucker Carlson dilemma and situation is his last post by the way I was watching this this morning Google Tucker's last show in it he says the TLDR on that maybe we can just uh pull that up is that uh he basically says the media is corrupt he says imagine how I'm just paraphrasing he says, imagine what level of basically scumbag you are if you will promote the the uh agenda of your largest advertiser over the public and um let me just pull it up here uh theme and then it got canned because he was probably right he was about to spill the beans on everything and um just see here about, about tucker carlson i mean he's he's kind of you know he's he he was he was one of them he said a lot he's said a lot of off outlandish things largely probably driven by i don't know the advertisers shoot what i wanted to show you yeah i might have an ad blocker on so let me pull that up let's see cbs you can google it but um what well, says tucker quit why did tucker let me pull this over you guys now i'm confused well it agreed to part ways 
yeah, there's more to unpack in here. And um, so here it says he was fired related to a discrimination lawsuit. Huh, well, I, I don't know. So, but his, he was saying that, um, you know, the media, you know, essentially what I just told you that the media was corrupt and they would follow the agenda of their largest advertiser over the health and safety of their followers. And uh, I, I don't know, you know, it, we hate to be conspiracy theorists, but if let's say you are Rupert Murdoch and you, you got tons of money and, um, you know, they are the owners of these companies in BlackRock. Look, it's it's all about raising more money, which comes down to return, paying return on investment. And how do you do that? You can manipulate the attention span and the media and of your followers. And sometimes it's ethically done. Sometimes it maybe it's not ethically done. We don't know. All right, let's get back. I'm going to keep the class to an hour today. Uh, so, so we have the the news there. Coinbase goes on offensive. Let's see, gold regains favor. Coinbase goes 100k bitcoins. We already covered that news. Um, so let's look at the chart, really. I mean, that's all that matters right now. We've got uh, Bitcoin here uh, on the weekly. Certainly could back to this, come back to this 25.5 area. You know, I've been saying that. Uh, and we deep unpack that more in the active trader class. Let me show this other chart here. Uh, sorry, these are these are those. Um, you know, this is the one I wanted to show you. And so let me just turn this off, all this other stuff. But essentially, simple TA would, would tell us we should pull back here to the 200 weekly moving average. And that would pull us right around 25.5. And the other reason for that is, well, I mean, this was resistance right in here. Now, those of you in Active Trader might be about to ask me, well, what about that big vector candle there? We'll talk about that tomorrow. But from this standpoint here, you know, this arrow, this level here of 25,300, that was the line in the sand we needed to get back above back in these uh, since the first of the year. So during the downtrend, we had a hard bounce. Remember that first big drop on Bitcoin came right down to that 25.5, 25.3 level, bounced up, came down, broke through it, pushed back up, resistance, resistance. And again, resistance, resistance. Finally, we broke above that in this big vector candle there. And so wouldn't it make sense, if not highly probable, to pull back and retest that level as support? That would also be the bull market support band as we get closer to this area. So, I mean, there you have it, you guys. I think, you know, this is what we want to see. We want to see a retest and bounce off of support here and our indicators starting to turn back higher. I'm not going to open these up. That's for tomorrow's class. But, um, you know, and uh, so that's what I would be waiting for, for, as I've been saying, a great next buying opportunity. Does this mean we're in the bull market and continue straight up to 100? No, it doesn't. I mean, this is... This is a pullback. We're in a new uptrend here as we've drawn. And what happens when we hit the upper edge of the uptrend, usually it'll pull back down. And so somewhere in here would be should be where we find support. And then we push it back up higher. Now we have, I've outlined already the uh, possible bounce zone. Disregard that. We'll look at that tomorrow. Let's see, where is the... Bear with me. I've got a, a, a number of different charts here. You know that. Okay, I guess it's this one. But again, weekly bearish on this ERI, or sorry, the TSI, both of them. And um, But the reason I think once we break 30,000, 32,000, it can kind of get back out of this range. You know, it's pretty fast move up to the uh, golden pocket right in here around 49,000 to 50,000. Whether it pushes higher up into these ranges, I, I I just, this pure speculation based on this chart pattern. So don't take that as gospel. More importantly is that uh, it's on that, um, the the bounce, this is the one on that monthly. So from the top to the bottom, Fibonacci golden pocket uh, retracement puts us right up to 48K, the 52K area. From there, who knows? Probably a rollover and a comeback down into this, 
region. Maybe we come back down to this level. All we can do is speculate, not that. I was trying to draw this out a bit. Right, so up here, down and retest this uh, 32,000 range. Pretty significant so, uh, support resistance level this right here. So um, anyway, you guys, anything else you want to look at? A couple people saying I'm on Team Tucker. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Yeah, I haven't been following that that much. And so... Um, and shame on me. I should pull it up inside our members area. I know we have it there. Uh, let's see. I need to click on it here. The one we... This is a good one. So... Yeah, it's right in the middle. Right in the middle. It doesn't tell us much of anything. Uh, they need compelling sounding controlled opposition. Yeah. Tucker was it until he started stepping beyond the line. Okay. The house is not its talking heads. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think he probably got a little too, too close to the truth or sort of started saying things. You know, if you're the highest watched news anchor on the network and you start getting a little too popular and you start telling everybody that the media is corrupt and imagine what kind of low lowlifes they are at a grand scale if they start putting the interests of their largest advertisers ahead of its viewership well where do you go with that well i can tell you he'll he'll probably continue going on with that i know he's moved to some moving to some uh, cable uh, show but that's, you know, the Tucker's heyday is, is, is come and gone. Now, somebody made a point on, on Tic Tac, a uh, Trump Carlson ticket would be a sure winner. But I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, Trump being indicted and all that and and generally being just just a little too much. Like if, if he had toned it down and kept, you know. I won't go into the uh, scandals, but if you know, he he could have been that could have been the new Kennedys, but he just, you know, I, I was a Trump fan, knew him at a, a distance, and did some things with Trump University back in the day, and just all of these things, you know. But um, as he goes, just uh, he's dangerous, I think, and I think people realize that. And I don't know my opinion, um, but you know, not many better options. Even the Democrats, seventy percent, don't want Biden to run again. So where are we? I'm hearing Gavin Newsom runs out of California. Uh, when I say I'm hearing, I'm just you know, hearing from the same sources you guys have. And uh, uh, Newsom would be tough. Californians don't like the guy. I mean, I lived in you know, California. Nobody liked Newsom. But uh, Ron DeSantis, popular governor in Florida. A lot of people like him down there. But, you know, he's a little, he's a bit polarizing too. And he's un, he's not as charismatic. He's so it's it's hard to find that right mixture of all these things, but I can see why the rest of the world is sort of questioning uh, what's going on over here. We're sort of a bipolar country. We get one guy in there who says this and that and the other. The next one comes in and reverses all of that. It, it's not a good look for democracy that we can't have any continuity with anything and um, won't really go farther. I've nowhere farther to go with that. So um <clears throat> yeah, thanks, KS. I was uh, it's true. Robert Kennedy Jr. is a wild card. The Kennedys are loved. Uh he uh running on the Dem side, he's pro Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly. And uh I think that um, you know, that may be his biggest talking point. Is it enough? I'm not sure. We'll see. But uh get your microwave popcorn ready. It's gonna be an interesting uh year and a half two years when we start getting into the election cycle uh, i'm exhausted just thinking about it um sure uh old man biden is as well uh it's 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 he's he's beyond where he should be in public office i just he should enjoy his older years um but anyway I, i'm not going to get political about it it's um just the whole process is exhausting all right, uh, let me just take a couple things here. And what do we have? I have Adam. We're just kind of look at some indicators here on a four hour chart. Not uh, not looking great on a lot of these coins here. Let me just go back into a 
kind of my watch list, see if anything looks good or interesting here. We'll just touch on the, uh, let's see what Bitcoin dominance we could look at. Um, I probably shouldn't do that on a four hour chart. I wanted to look at the total market cap. How's this behaving? Total market cap pulling back pretty strongly. We just look at that on the daily. For some context, we'll look at that in more detail tomorrow. Again, if you're watching the replay on this and you want to find out more about our advanced class, moonstreamcrypto.com.io, sorry, moonstream.io slash M3. Yeah, not a big, not a great promoter here, guys. I'll put it up in a minute. Uh, so, so Bitcoin here on the uh, daily, no, what is this, PHA and holding there temporarily. Let's look at uh, the... Bitcoin dominance here. Interesting Bitcoin dominance. <laughs> Got that blind squirrel in there. Um, you know, could could still continue pushing higher. I would imagine that's the case once we get another push higher on everything. But look at this total market cap looking weak here. We'll look at that in more detail tomorrow. But this circle is kind of the circle of death. It's got to maintain this new upward trend here. And so uh, it's looking like it could bounce, but maybe not quite yet. Watch the total market cap as a surrogate of the overall markets in Bitcoin. You know, certainly could come back down to this level, which would be a great support line. I mean, th this is likely what'll happen. This is simple TA, and you know, things are quiet right now. So, um, at any rate, uh, AVAX, not nothing worth really looking at. Everything's red. But the story is pullback time. Get ready for your next bounce, as we've been saying, and identifying candidates in the uh, active trader class. So, you know, with that, uh, we're right up on the hour here. If you guys have any other comments, let me see. Uh, let me just discuss this here. We've got uh, <laughs> um, private says I'm polarizing too. Ask my wife. Well, you know, polarizing is good, especially in the marketplace. You've got to have an angle. You, you know, and the whole game is. In marketing, my marketing mentor, Dan Kennedy, you know, he's a, you have to polarize your audience, repel the people you don't want, which will endear the people you do want. That's what politicians do. You know, it's not that they wake up and they feel so strongly about abortion or uh, you know, Bitcoin. It's what's, what's a platform I can run on. So can't trust them with that. Most of them. Um, anyway, but polarizing. And so if you're the bigger marketplace that can elect you to the office is if it likes one thing, well, you're like, you're going to run, you're going to be for that too. If no one else is doing that. Uh, anyway, okay. It says, whatever the crisis they roll out. Let's see. Wait, I missed one. Uh, I have not met one in person that likes Newsom, but he won miraculously by a huge amount of votes. You know, uh, the democratic engine, uh, they, they are very well organized. I will say that. And so the whole voting fraud thing last year, whether you believe it or not, whether the truth, you know, it's hard to know because um, my sister, I won't get, well, not family, but just the pe people that were part of it, the, they were very well organized, much better than the, you know, the GOP there. Big rallies, but quietly, the Democrats were very, uh, very organized. So the miraculous win. Yeah, I, th I think old, old Joe, though, is pretty miraculous somehow he got more votes than uh, obama uh, who was loved and adored and so by many but at any rate uh we'll leave that alone ks says whatever crisis they roll out before and during then for us to wade through survive yeah i, I mean look be aware guys i would expect some other sort of mini capitulation and pullback some news that will be near or close to this bottoming pattern you know we may be bottoming here you know, in the short term, see another push. But we also want to watch for, though, and I did sort of just see this. Anybody see it? Uh, sorry, this is so messy, um, but I'll just let me do it this way. Uh, it, uh, you know, this is this is potentially head and shoulders here. We've got a left shoulder, nice long shoulder there. We have a head. If we start to see a shoulder, right shoulder building, then then there's that case for back down to this 25.5. And as soon as I draw this, it's going to bring all that other noise back on the chart. But see what I'm drawing here? That 25,300 level that was so important and we finally broke above it. Well, look at that. I already have the line there. So this, this, this could be a head and shoulders 
pattern forming. So how do you integrate that on the daily? So, so we have a daily getting a bit oversold on the TSI. If we see a bit of a push higher and it can't break this, if it doesn't break 30,000 back into new highs and it starts to peter over in here, then we've got a head and shoulders padding and we're likely going to come down here. And now we're, then we're looking at June, July for the big, the next big wave up. So all I can do is tell you how I'm reading this. And uh, so, you know, we're close, we're close, but we don't want to jump the gun. Uh, if you did get back in over here and you're wanting to hold on, I would personally, I'm going to be selling half of what I'm in and my long-term holdings into a next little push higher on the daily. And in retrospect, should have been getting out right here. Uh, not all of it, but, um, you know, bearish engulfing candle right there, bearish ERI, bearish TSI. How many times do we need to see this? And the bearish signal line. So when we start to go green on this, on the daily, we're going to be looking for a four or five, seven day push higher and really looking for, does it, can it break the recent highs or are we forming a head and shoulders? So you don't need to get all into these Elliott waves and, uh, you know, these patterns and, uh, you know, crazy things like that. Simple TA is often the best, but, um, you know, since now we see it, we can't unsee it. We've got a head there. Are we forming a head and shoulders pattern? That's that's a question you want to be asking yourselves. And you want to be looking to, you know, until I can invalidate it, I'm usually saying that's what's going to happen. So on that note, that's class for today. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining. And again, if you are watching this on the YouTubes, uh, we uh, are going to be doing at some point probably live classes on this. Give that a whirl. It could be fun. And I can learn more about our Moonstream classes. Not that, you know, when that Moonstream.io should go here to the M3 program. It's our advanced level training. It includes the indicators that I was just showing you. And of course, other classes, live classes and uh, advanced trainings. If you are just interested in the indicators, just go to cryptomastery.online. Okay, all right, you guys. Thank you, Pirate J. Thank you, Private. Uh, thanks, everyone, for your comments. And we'll see you next week. And uh, for you guys in M3, we'll talk tomorrow and unpack some of this a little bit deeper. Okay, take care, everyone.